Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the best-selling author, award-winning international speaker, industry-leading salesperson, and a remarkable survivor, Christine Clifford. Well, I'm Christine Clifford, and I am the co-founder of Divorcing Divas. And before I go any further, I need to clear up one tiny little misunderstanding about me and our company. I understand that accidentally some of the publicity that went out about today's event said I was Christine Clifford, president of the Comedy Club. <laughs> well, divorce, comedy, divorce, comedy. I, I can see how they got the two mixed up. Well, one of the things that I have learned going through my second divorce here, as many of you have learned in your divorces as well, is that Divorce is a very difficult subject for most people to discuss. In fact, when my parents were going through a divorce, and this would have been about 37 years ago, the children in my family weren't even allowed to say the word divorce. We had to call it their separation or their situation. And, you know, I thought, it's too bad my parents didn't trademark that, the situation. You know, Mark Ser Mike Sarantino and, and uh, the Jersey Shore hadn't even been born yet. My parents could have made millions. But, you know, because of their situation, I was a little bit curious and interested in divorce as a child. And I don't know how many of you uh, grew up in the era that I grew up in, but there used to be a show on television called Divorce Court. Does anybody remember that show? And, you know, I used to sneak down in the basement and I'd be watching it and my mother would come and throw herself in front of the television and turn it off and go, you can't watch that. That's never going to happen in our family. Well, unfortunately, it did. And, you know, the ironic thing about my entire situation is that all of my life, I thought I was going to be one of these women who would be sitting on my front porch of my house with my white picket fence as my seven grandchildren played in my backyard with our four dogs while my husband of 60 years and I sipped banana daiquiris and reminisced. Well, that has not been my situation. And you know what makes it even more of a challenge is when you're going through your second divorce. You can kind of see people's minds spinning as you get introduced and somehow the topic comes up and they go, oh really, two divorces? I wonder what's wrong with her. <laughs> I think it's unfortunate that people going through divorce get this feeling that their life is over that they'll never be able to move on. Even after going through two divorces, I have never thought of myself as a divorce victim. Rather, I like to think of myself as a healthy person who was married to the wrong guys. Well, I'm not the only one in this room who has walked this journey. And one of the things that I always like to do is give recognition to others who had the courage and the strength to come and join us today and to deal with this big word, divorce. So in just a moment, I'm going to ask some different groups of people to stand up if you're able to and you're comfortable in doing so. And if you're in one of the groups that stands, if you could remain standing until I ask you to be seated, that would be terrific. And this is going to take courage on the parts of a lot of people. I would like to give recognition to anybody who is here with us today who is currently going through the process of divorce to please stand up and be recognized for your courage in joining us today. <laughs> Stay standing. I would like to ask our people that are currently going this, through the situation to be joined by anyone here who has been through a divorce that's completed in the past to please stand up and be recognized.
And lastly, I would like to ask anyone in this room today whose life has ever been touched by divorce, as a family member, a friend, a caregiver, an employer, to please stand up and be recognized. And let's give ourselves all a huge round of applause. My second marriage begins and ends with a love story. And on Sunday night when she dropped me off at the airport and I walked down to the northwest counter, lo and behold, pure coincidence, Mr. Wonderful was sitting right next to me on the airplane. Well, we talked for three hours the whole way home. And when we got off that airplane, he followed me down to baggage claim. He hadn't checked any luggage. <laughs> so we, we went home, and the next morning I called him up and invited him to lunch at 11.30 on Wednesday to talk about my book. Well, we started our lunch at 11.30. And at 11.30 at night, we were still having lunch. He had to go home because he was flying out the next morning for five days of work. And those five days, we talked on the phone every day for hours and hours. And the day he was getting back, I was flying out of town for five days. And we continued to talk for hours and hours. It turned out that the first day we were both going to be back was Valentine's Day. And I thought, great, I'll come over and make you breakfast. So I showed up. Now, mind you, I had been in a 29-year marriage, 33-year relationship, I wasn't used to dating. I didn't have any idea if he even had any pots and pans. So I brought everything with me but the kitchen sink. <laughs> and I walked into his place at 9 o'clock in the morning. And at 9.07, he asked me to marry him. And I said yes. <laughs> I told you this begin was a love story. So. Uh, we kind of continued on, and I sold my house, and as my house was getting ready to sell, I, I kept kind of urging him, you know, I'd like to get another house. I don't want to move into an apartment complex, and kind of strange behavior, but wouldn't go look at houses, wouldn't go look at houses. So I got in a little bit of a panic because I had a house full of furniture, so I put it all up for sale in an estate sale and moved in with him. So uh, three months after I moved in, he informed me that he had not paid his taxes for three years. Now, being so in love and thinking I was such a savior, I said, well, that's great. I'll just use the money that I got from selling my house to help you pay off your taxes. So I did. Two months later, his second ex-wife sued him for a quarter of a million dollars in unpaid child support and alimony, and our wedding was two months away. And I got married. And it was shortly after we got married that the physical abuse started. And I mentioned to you that my second marriage begins and ends with a love story. And the ending of the story is I decided it was time for me to start loving myself again. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, the interesting thing is that they, I have a really strong sense of humor. And so the humor started coming back to me. And I actually started playing this game with myself called the clue phone's ringing. And it's for you. <laughs> now, if I look back on all those months before I ever got married, about three months into the relationship, uh, my husband had to take a trip out of the country and asked me if I would go over to his place and take care of his cat. So I showed up, and there was yellow masking tape all over his door and an eviction notice. Now, I was literally so naive, I, I looked at the key and looked at the door and looked at the key and looked at the door and thought, what is this, an eviction notice? So I sat down right in the hall and called Mr. Wonderful over in India. 
Oh, they, those people at that place I live, they've probably lost my rent check. Can you go down and pay my rent? And I'll pay you back when I get back in town. Now, that didn't feel good to me, but I did it. And I went downstairs, and not only was he one month behind in his rent, he was three months behind in his rent. Clue phone's ringing. It's for you. <laughs> then we went on our first trip together, and we actually got to go to see the Masters. Uh, I'm an avid golfer, and this was the best trip of my life. And I had set up this uh, golf um, for us to go golfing. It was going to be the first time we'd ever golfed together. And uh, it was a private club, and we had to pay a lot in greens fees. And we get out on the first tee, and we have this couple with us that are members of the club, because you have to have a member with you. And um, we get to the first tee, and all three of us hit our drives down the middle, and Mr. Wonderful's drive goes off into the woods. Well, we get to the second hole. Same thing, all three of us down the fairway. Mr. Wonderful's drive is off into the woods. We get to the third hole, and this happens again. Mr. Wonderful takes his golf club, slams it into the ground so hard the head breaks off, picks it up, tries to kick it into the woods, slips and falls, picks it up, kicks it again. Clue phone's ringing. It's for you. Uh, so then my last, uh, my last clue phone ringing is, when, uh, it was shortly before we were going to get married, and Mr. Wonderful's mother was not able to travel. She was quite elderly, had had some damage to her hips. So we decided we were going to fly home and, and, you know, visit with her and then, you know, come back and have the wedding. As she put me in the car on our final day of visit, she patted me on the shoulders and said, Christine, he's your problem now. <laughs> Blue phone's ringing, and it's for you. <laughs> We've all got things going on in our lives. And we can't always change that thing in our life. I can never go back and change the fact that I've gotten divorced twice. But the one thing I can change and do something about is my attitude and how I choose to deal with that thing on a go-forward basis. <laughs> well, we will be covering a lot of material today that we hope will help you in your journey with your divorce. I truly hope that I have brought a smile to your face during your luncheon, but just in case I haven't, I did come prepared. I brought Christine Clifford's top 20 reasons why you might be a divorcing diva. You might be a divorcing diva if you hid the TV remote where you knew he'd never find it. <laughs> you might be a divorcing diva if you burned your unity candle in the jack-o'-lantern. You might be a divorcing diva if you gave him back to his mother. You might be a divorcing diva if your virginity was restored during your marriage. You might be a divorcing diva if you sent a thank you note to the other woman. So if you're a divorcee, survivor, or friend, and you want to help win this race, in the end, remember that attitude is the key to success. A good one can do it for you, is my guess. Well, nothing is ever quite perfect, it seems. Our lives take many paths and often sway from our dreams. Look around and rejoice in the things that you have. Oh yes, one last reminder, don't forget to laugh. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you.